Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flater Mouse. This is part three of us shooting ballistic glazing, often called bulletproof glass. Today we're going to learn the difference between witness and attack sides, and we'll also try to dispel some of the myths about compromised glass, you know, the parts that are already cracked. Our tests are pretty informal, but still we're getting a lot of information and we're learning a lot in the process. Now the type of glass that we're using is called laminated glass. It has alternating layers of glass, then a softer plastic type material in the middle. And it's kind of built like a really thick windshield. This is about 30 millimeters thick, in fact. Now this type of glass has something called an attack side and a witness side. The attack side, of course, is the side that the bullets are gonna be coming from. And the witness side is the area that you're protecting. Now the biggest difference with this type of glass is it has on one side a polycarbonate anti-spall layer which keeps the glass from blasting inside. We wanted to see if there's a difference in the level of protection if we shot it the opposite way through the witness side. Boy. So instead of the glass coming back at the shooter, all that glass was just being blasted out the back and most of these shotgun slugs just went right through the glass. So we actually created more questions such as if we flip it around to the attack side, will it be able to stop those slugs instead of letting them go through? And why is the anti-spall polycarbonate layer only on one side? <laughs> now this glass is designed to stop a 44 Magnum pistol round. However, in our first test, it actually stopped a 223 rifle round. Now we pushed it a little further, shot it with a 308, and that one went through with no problem, at least through partially compromised glass. Okay, we brought the same pane of glass that we shot in test number two back out again. What we want to see this time is, is there a difference between the level of protection between the witness side and the attack side? And since we have some areas that are less compromised, we want to see how effective those areas are at stopping some of the projectiles we've shot before. All right, shooting the Kiapa M19, 9mm rounds. Since the only difference between the witness side and the attack side is that layer of polycarbonate on one side, does that layer add extra protection and does it have some nefarious purpose? Okay, now we have flipped the glass around with the proper attack side facing the shooter. Now we can see a big difference in the damage to the glass between the attack side and the witness side. The front side's all broken up, but the back side's nice and smooth. The bullet is much more defeated shooting in this orientation. Uh, the DGS-12 in a high brass, so it's a little hotter than last time. That was the first one we shot last time, so we'll see how it does again. Wow. Wow. It really moved. Now we can see how much glass is being ejected outwards. If the shooter who is probably five feet away, which is a realistic scenario, is getting glass blown in his face and breathing glass dust, that's probably gonna incapacitate him. I believe that might be the reason why they don't have the anti-spalling coating on both sides. Now despite hitting a compromised cracked area of the glass with a slug which is above the rating of the glass, it's still totally destroyed this slug. That's the back end of the slug that we're looking at right there. Get a closer look at that. Monolit 28. It's a steel Latvian slug made by D. Duplex. Factory load even. Ooh, that's a good recoil. <laughs> that's a hot load. Ooh. Now a one ounce steel slug, you'd think, hey, that thing's really hard and that's gonna go through that glass with no problem. Now if you remember test number two, 
the slug had no problem going through the glass when we shot it through the witness side. Now if you look close, you can see that the steel slug is coming back towards the camera a little bit. Something hit up. That's the wadding. Yeah. Which means that the round's probably... Okay, now the moment of truth. Well, oh here we go. Is this the old one? Yeah, that's the old one. Okay. It's got to be inside there, but it stopped it too. Look at that. You got a little America bulge right there. That's amazing. Less of a bulge than the last one. Huge difference just in the, but, you know, shooting it with the uh, attack side towards the shooter. Yeah, perfectly smooth though. Yeah. Fantastic. And then that was very compromised glass too. So we found this about 15 yard, or five yards away. Deformed chunk of steel on the ground. Hit the glass and bounced back out. Hey, let's face it, glass is very hard. The Brennicke Special Do Forces, get... it's designed to be a steel penetrator for, um, you know, getting into engine and It's locks. got the attached wadding. That'll be inter interesting. We haven't shot any Brennickes yet, representing Germany. I don't okay. know if these are made in Germany, but that's where they were invented. Achtung. Okay, he's going to shoot it right in this area, and it's... By all standards, pretty compromised. I'm just getting this little area here. Oh, 40 pounds of glass, ladies and gentlemen. That had recoil like a three inch magnum. <laughs> oh, One and three eighths ounces or 40 grams going 1400 plus feet per second. Kicks like a mule. Sorry about that, Greg. Okay, well, that was compromised, but still, so was the other glass. Right there. And where the last two made little nice little smooth bulges, that special forces round melted right through there. That's a nasty round. Boy. Law enforcement only, though, folks. I'd like to have to try that one on steel, actual steel. Yeah, yeah. Now, the area that he hit, you can't even see through anymore. Lots of cracks and crazes. So how this slug would work on a brand new piece of glass, we could only guess. Okay, now we're gonna just shoot it with 10 rounds of nine millimeter and see what actually comes through. We're really compromised now. That was just ball ammo. And we gotta. Get the... Last time I did that, I <laughs> poked a hole in my finger. Mostly just the jacket left over. So I don't, I don't know. It looks pretty good out here. There, it looks like something. I don't know if that's a new hole. That is a nine millimeter hole. I think that's a new hole. It's, yeah. I don't know if that made it through or not. There, you got a little bit of lead back here. This one looks like it made it through. Most of these, however, are just little dimples. Yep. So the compromised glass, at least in its uh, better better position, still stopped. It's Nine crazy. Hardball. Even though it was compromised. So your standard Winchester, one ounce, two and three quarter inch, deer slug. Anytime. Now you can see that the area where the slug hit looked like a 9mm had already hit that area. So it was very, very compromised in that spot. Now at this point the glass is so beat up that how this slug would actually behave shooting at the attack side with a new piece of glass is anyone's guess. So he picked an area that was compromised but it was still meh. And it, it, it went through. I don't think it's as good as that. No, that one. That one. This is like a good. yeah. This went good. through with some authority. This one just went through with a, with a whimper. Yeah, but it made it through. Forty cal. Winchester Ranger SXT, 180 grain. This is my duty ammo. Not my duty pistol.
So which ones do you think are there? Well, it's tough to tell, but some of them made it through. Some of them found some weak spots in that compromised glass. And some of them are still just bulges here. Wow. So even 40 caliber, which is known for barrier penetration, uh, did not make it through compromised soft glass. You can get our deposit back on that? Yeah. <laughs> Only in Hawaii, Michigan, and Ohio. Oh. Five cents. If you look inside this hole here, you can also see there's a huge air gap now inside of this. Uh, it just knocked all the glass, glass out of that. Right yeah. Down in here. Oh, my. Yeah, it's. Look down in there. There's a big old gap in this glass sandwich now that uh, where everything has spoken oh. and fallen. Over yeah, I think bottom. I think the glass is <laughs> it's about, it. about had it. <laughs> what? I'm like two trips out here, though. Lots of, lots of jacket. You got your money's worth. These must be your 40. You have to use some of that YouTube money and get yourself <laughs> another $1,800 piece of glass. Yeah, you got to use a new piece of glass for each yeah. shot. There's a What's 40, wrong with you? There's a 40 caliber round. That's right, you're going to brand new 6 by 6 inch uh, piece of glass for every bullet. Yeah. And it has to be in a frame. you got to frame it. you got to cut it into smaller pieces. So we'll, <laughs> you know, a little that, piece that big. We'll spend another couple thousand dollars cutting that yeah. glass and for those of you who didn't read the comments it cost uh two hundred dollars just to slice that one big pane into four pieces two hundred dollars yeah so slicing this thing into smaller pieces would run thousands of dollars just for the cutting work yeah so not viable so what did we learn here there's a big difference in the level of protection between the attack side and the witness side despite the glass being damaged it still exceeded the level of protection it was rated for now Compromise is definitely relative to the location of where the glass is damaged. For example, if you shot a spitball at this area, it would go right through it. Even though we have some light cracks, it'll still stop some projectiles that are even above its UL rating. And finally, if the glass is pulverized all the way through the pane of glass, the level of protection has dropped so much it may or may not stop a, even a 22. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.